Hi team, greetings everyone. In today's session, we are going to see how to create a simple project in Fireflink platform. So in the previous session, we saw how to sign up ourselves, means how to register ourselves in the Fireflink platform. And we have already done the registration process also. So now, if you can see, I have accessed this web page using this URL, fireflink.com. Now, once after we navigate to this particular platform, we have to click on this sign in button. Since I have already registered, I have to sign in now. So I am clicking on this sign in button. So observe the URL. It is fireflink.com as of now. Let me just click on sign in. So once I click on sign in, it is navigating me to the sign in page. And if you notice the URL, it is app.fireflink now. So whenever you register yourself as a user and you want to sign in yourself into this Fireflink platform, you will be navigating to this app.fireflink web means URL. So now if you can see this is the sign in page and here also we have an option called as create an account. If you are still not registered, you can just click on this create an account and you can follow the registration process and you can register yourself as a user. Now since I have registered, I have to enter my registered email ID and password. So let me just enter my email ID which is already registered. So now I have to enter my password. So once the email ID and password is entered, just click on sign in. So this will navigate you to the actual Fireflink platform. So when I say actual Fireflink platform, in Fireflink platform, we have two levels. One is license level, one is individual project level. So let me just show you. So these are the two levels which I am talking about. So this license level, we also call it as all project level and the project level, we also call it as individual project level. So here, as of now, once we sign in into the Fireflink platform, we will, we will always navigate to this particular level, which is nothing but all project level. So how do I say that? So this is the platform which we navigated, right? So in this platform, if you can see in the top left corner, we have this Fireflink logo under this we have means it is specified at all projects, which indicates that we are pres currently present in the all project level. So what about the individual project level? So let me discuss, means let us discuss this in detail in the further sessions. As of now, we will focus on all project level. So in all project level, we have different sections like dashboard is there, projects is there, configuration is there, and license is there. If you can see multiple sections are there, but still we are landing in the project section. Why? Because initially when we are going to start with the testing activity, the first thing that we have to do is create a project. Correct. So here, if you can see in all project level in project section, we have three tabs projects means projects, users and roles. And this project tab is for creating the different types of project for that testing activity. So in order to understand where to create the project so that this platform Fireflink platform is navigating us to this particular all project level and in project section so that the user can easily identify that this is the space where we have to create the project. So to make it user friendly, the application is de designed in such a way. Now, as we discussed in the earlier session about the registration process, right? We were discussing that we will be using a cloud version of Fireflink platform. Now, whenever you register yourself as a user under the Fireflink platform, you will be able to access the cloud version. Now, if you can see in the left hand navigation, we have a separate section called as license. Let me just click on it. So once I click on it, if you can see there is a unique license number. So whenever you register yourself as a user, you'll be having a unique register num means license number, which will be displaying in the license section. And here we have this privilege type plan status and managed by. So all these things we will be discussing in detail in the further sessions. So here I just wanted to show you like every time when you register yourself as a user under Fireflink, a unique Fireflink ID will be generated for your license. That license number you can access with the help of this license section over here. And here as we are talking about uh, cloud version, right? If you can see there is a type called as C basic, which is nothing but cloud basic, which is the cloud version and which is a free version, which we are accessing for the training purpose. Now, if I click on this license number, I'll be getting some more extra information like one number of parallel runs, the storage uh, allocated for this particular license. All this information will be displayed here. We will discuss in detail in the further sessions about these informations. So now let me just click on this back arrow and let me just navigate to project section. So once I navigate to project section, here I am inside the projects tab where it is asking for plus project. So here if you can see it is saying 
quick start step one click plus project to start adding the projects so now when i say i want to automate an application say for example i am going to automate a web application so in that case i have to create a project first so how do we create the project just click on this plus project button over here which will give you the create project pop-up now it is asking for name of the project first thing is when it is asking for name of the project what application we are going to automate here so let me i am going to take a demo application here let me just open a new tab and the url of the demo application is shopastack.com so i have given the url of the application so this is the shopastack application which is a demo application which is very similar to our amazon flipkart so it's a e-commerce application so here this is the application which i am going to take for the automation purpose in this training sessions so here when i navigate to firefling platform it is asking for name of the project your name of the project is nothing but the same as the application name so in my case the application name is shopastack so i'll give the same name as shopastack so now i have given the name of the project so it is asking for type of the project once i click on this type over here it is actually a drop down it is giving me multiple types web services web mobile web and mobile salesforce like is there any difference when we select the type of the project yes it is going to means the type of scenario that can be automated is depending on the type of project you are going to select here so in order to explore that so here if you can see i have this types of project so whenever means we click on the type of project tab drop down we get all these options like web services web mobile web and mobile and salesforce so when i select the project type as web what is going to happen in that particular project i can automate only web services related scenarios meaning that i cannot automate web related scenarios i cannot automate a web application i can automate only web services related scenarios when i select the type as web then what I can automate? I can automate web applications as well as web services. Okay, when I select the mobile as a type of project, I can automate Android or iOS and as well as web services. Okay, what if web and mobile? So I can automate web, mobile. When I say mobile, it may be Android or iOS. And I can, in a single script, in a single script, I can add web steps as well as mobile. Means in a single script, I can automate two platforms. When I select the project type as web and mobile and as well as web services. And when I select the project type as Salesforce, I can automate web application, mobile application, mobile application in the sense it may be Android or iOS. And in a single script, I can add the automation for like web as well as mobile and Salesforce as well as web services. So here, if you can see this web services is addition for all the types of project. Why? Because web service testing is all about backend testing, right? So here, this web services will be addition for all the types of project. So now I have taken which application, this particular application, which is nothing but Shopastack, which is actually a web application. How I'm saying this is a web application? Because I'm accessing this particular application with the help of a URL and a browser. Any application which is accessed with the help of browser and URL is called as a web application. Now, if I want to automate this particular application, what is the type of project I'm, so, I'm supposed to select here? Since it is a web application, I wanted to select web as a type of project here. So that what can be done? I can automate the web type of application and web related scenarios can be automated in this particular project. And coming to the description and web URL, if you can see these two fields are not mandatory. So here, if you want to describe about this particular application, you can use this particular description option. And here, if you want to give the URL of the application, you can give it over here. Since I have the URL of the application, I'll just give it here. I'll just copy this and I'll just give the URL here. Now, you can, means, you have a, means you may have a question like name is mandatory, type is mandatory. Why not URL? Without a URL, how can we access this particular application? Because web application obviously is accessed with the help of URL. Why this web URL is not as made as a mandatory field? Why? Because like whenever we are going to test the application, obviously we will be testing the application in test environment. So we cannot say the test environment URL and the production and pre-production or dev environment like we'll be having different different URLs. So here in test environment only, Initially, we will not be actually using the URL. We will be using what IP addresses sometimes. So in that case, if you want to change this, 
there is no need for changing it we can create a means we have a separate concept called as variables and we will be seeing that in future now here the reason for not making this mandatory is since it is changeable we are not making this as a mandatory field if you want you can fill it if you don't want you no need to fill this now once after you means fill all this required details you can just click on create now before clicking on create as of now we have selected the selected the web means type as web here if you can see web url is asking now okay what if i am selecting web services so once i select web services that related information will be asking like it is asking for base url port number okay what if i go for mobile so it is asking for different option like what is a app type whether it is a native hybrid so all this information when when we are going to see the respective automation say for example when we are going to see the mobile automation we will discuss in detail about all these options now when i select web and mobile what is it going to ask it is going to ask me for both web url as well as web type means app type platform so we are going to discuss in detail about these features once we are going to discuss about the respective application types and when i select salesforce it's a combination of all right so it is going to ask me for all the information means app type app activity bundle id so no need to worry about these informations these informations we will discuss in detail once we are automating the respective applications so now we will focus on web automation so here i am going to select the type as web so once i select the type as web what are the mandatory information name and type that's it so here if you can see description and url is not mandatory if you want to give url you can give it since i have the url i'm just copying it and i'm just giving the url so once after you paste the url you can just click on create which will create the project and which will navigate me to the individual project yes this is called as individual project now how do i say this is a individual project now in the same left hand side if you can see under the firefly logo we have the project name and we have multiple sections so this indicates we are in individual project level and individual project level we are in test development section so let us discuss about the difference between license level and this individual project level in detail in the next session now i'll just show you how to navigate between the two levels one is all project level one is individual project level as of now i am in individual project level right i want to navigate to all project level how do i do that see the same option click on the project name and you'll be getting a drop down where you can click on this all project once you click on this all project you'll be navigating from individual project to all project now if you want to again navigate to individual project there are two options one is click on the project name which will navigate you to the individual project level so let me navigate again to the all project level how do we do that just click on this project name click on all project so another one option is just the same drop down just click on all project again you will get the same drop down and click on the respective project name which you want to navigate to which will navigate you to the individual project level again so these are the different options to navigate to the individual project level and in this session we have seen how to create a sample project in fireflink platform in the further session we will be just discussing about the difference between this license level meaning that all project level and individual project level in detail thank you